a Redemption Church Flagstaff. I did the exact same thing I did last week, and that is that I, uh, I started doing the live stream on my own personal page instead of on our church page. So uh, I got a ton of crap for it last week. I imagine I will as well from the rest of our church. So anyway, listen, here's the plan. If you uh, missed the first minute at the other stream and you're joining us here at the, at the church page, we are looking to do and produce um, some consistent content uh, kind of on a week to week basis. And so I'm going to run through kind of what we're looking at doing. And so uh, what this is that you're at now is what we're calling Vinny G Live. Uh, my name is Vince Garvey, hence the Vinny. I'm Anthony G. G E E is my last name. So there you go, Vinny G Live. It's very clever. That's what we do here. We're clever people. So uh, here's the plan. Tuesdays for Vinny G Live, 3 p.m. on every Tuesday, uh, we're going to have a few different segments of things that we'll talk about, things that we think uh, are important, things that will help us navigate uh, a different season that we're in, like we keep talking about. Um, we're also going to do updates on Tuesdays, so things that we think are important for us to know as Redemption Church, for us to, to know about culture and about life and, and things like that. And so that'll be Tuesdays at 3 and then Thursdays at three will be uh, Theology and Culture Thursdays. And so uh, we'll address uh, different things happening in culture and society at large. And what, what does the Bible speak to those things? What does the gospel say? What, what are the theological implications of those things? Sometimes we'll just have a desire to delve into a theological topic that we just think is really important for us to navigate both in the season and really in general. So that's going to be Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, Wednesdays, we're going to do some type of kids live cast for you guys as well. Um, something we're still kind of crafting that, but there'll be that during midweek. Some prayer content, Mondays and Fridays. And then, of course, our, our Sunday live stream, Sundays at 10 a.m. And so the idea is how do we produce some good content for you and, um, and keep us engaged kind of Again, kind of during a wild and, and different season that we find ourselves in. So here we are in our office, and um, people might be coming in and out and saying hi, uh, always at a six-foot distance or more. So um, anyway, so welcome. It's great to have you. Any any welcoming words, Antoine? Hey, excited to be here. I'm sorry for the title. Uh, you know, I, I submitted to our lead pastor on this one, so uh, yeah, I wasn't a big fan of that title. But, <laughs> you know, uh, it's okay. We'll, we'll get through. Hopefully, the show is better than the title. Yeah, he wanted he wanted Tony Garvey uh, live. I just wanted people to think uh, of me when we when you hear the title. But you should know, I, I I very rarely flex the lead pastor muscle, but when it comes to podcast names and and live stream names, that's where I draw the line. Like that's that's something I really care about. So. Um, yeah. So, at, and and this would be great. The whole point of this is is even as we're as we're live streaming, um, to be able to answer questions as they come in. So yes, Curtis, we are going to recommend that everyone be at least six feet apart. Um, the reason why we're not is because we just don't have the tech to be able to do that. So we're sanitized up. Um, we're both. I don't know. We're practically family. So this is, is more like we're, we mostly live together anyway. So it's kind of the same thing as you and Lindsay being together. So that's the way, but different <laughs> in some ways too. So anyway, it's great to be with you. Um, I want to give you guys some updates on some things that are happening here at the church that are important for us to know. Um, the first one is, uh, you probably all heard, but then uh, Flagstaff Unified School District, along with the rest of the state of Arizona, has closed school till the end of the year. The implications for us in that is uh, we will not have a place to meet on Sundays uh, at least until late May, probably early June. Um, say, you know, if everything all of a sudden just like gets restored and we're back and going and everything's lifted and we can meet again, there are some churches in town that have, have offered their buildings to us to be able to meet probably at a nighttime service. And, and so we might do something like that. But in other words, we're, we're hunkered down and we're pretty much ready to say for the next couple months, uh, we see ourselves kind of sticking with this digital format. And so that was a big impetus of, of like, how are we caring for y'all well? And how are we able to engage with you guys in the midst of that? So that's the first one. A lot of people have been asking about Good Friday and Easter Sunday. Uh, obviously, we will not be meeting in person, uh, but we will have digital services for both Good Friday and for Easter Sunday. They are going to look a little bit different, um, but in the midst of it, it's it's still a celebration for us. Like Jesus rose from the dead, so we are always, 
always excited about that. So um, in the future, as we look towards the day we can all kind of gather together again and, and be with one another, uh, sometime in that time where we're able to all come back together across redemption, we're going to try and have like an Easter Sunday celebration, right? It's not on the, the official date, but it's going to be, hey, like the church celebrates resurrection all the time. And so that's something to look forward to. Um, but anyway, just be paying attention for the dates and times that come out for those two services. We're going to have some more information about uh, what we'll be doing on Easter Sunday, which will be a pretty unique uh, experience for a lot of us as we seek to kind of share our stories and, and be present with you guys in that. Um, the last thing is we wanted to give you an update, uh, maybe a clarifier or just nuance something we said on Sundays. And, uh, and, and Anthony just kind of want to share about that and then we'll kind of move into some of our segments for the day. Yeah, so uh, the past two Sundays, obviously, we've been doing our response time via live stream. And because of everything going on with the coronavirus, we've encouraged during the generosity or giving portion of, of that time, we've encouraged people that if they've lost their jobs to, to stop giving, to not give, to not feel obligated to give. And uh, what I love is, honestly, our church's faithfulness, because a lot of people responded um, just kind of saying, like, aren't we supposed to always give? Like, aren't we supposed to yeah. give no matter what? And uh, you know, that's to many pastors' ears, they would say yes and amen, and here's my personal PayPal account. Um, but uh, we wanted to flesh that idea out and talk through that idea. A lot of you guys brought up um, the story of Jesus commending the, the widow who gave like her last bit of money to the temple in, in, in order to worship God and respond to his generosity to her and all, all this. And so... Um, so yeah, we, we just kind of want to respond to that and talk through why why we're saying it that way. Is it biblical or are we just being too nice or, or what it is? And so first I would say this is uh, I think if you look at overall giving in the Bible, you'd be hard pressed to find a Bible verse where God says to the people of God or to an individual, you have to give no matter what, like no matter what's going on in your life, you have to give. Uh, I, I, I haven't found that verse. Now, in the midst of that, what you do find from God to his people very often is, is this idea of giving uh, their first fruits, like always giving their first fruits. So the idea is when giving was first instituted in God's people in Israel, uh, there was currency, but that wasn't the main way people built wealth. It was through livestock and animals and harvests of, of different plants and things. And so they would so, so Donny Park people, that's you. Yeah, so yeah. If you live in Donny or Parks, you get that more we'll, than most. Yes, we'll, we might need to hire a cow broker for the church or something if you donate cows, but uh, we'll figure it out. I mean, or a butcher. Yeah, or a butcher. <laughs> then we just keep it for ourselves. But, um, and so this is how they would. Uh, so this idea of first fruits is the, the farmers, the ranchers, all these different people in Israel, they would give 10% uh, and all, different numbers too in there really based on different components there uh, to the temple essentially, to, to the running uh, uh, of God's work through his vocational Levitical priesthood and all that stuff. So uh, in the midst of that, what they were called to do was to give their first fruits. Um, and the idea of the first fruits is like, the, the, at the beginning of the harvest se season is when you get the first fruits. Now, part of what's interesting about the first fruits is the first fruits are maybe somewhat of an indicator of how much harvest you'll get, but they're not necessarily an indicator if there's still going to be rain, if there's still going to be more harvest, if there's going to still be more things to give. And so God was all, he was encouraging a very sacrificial thing by saying, hey, I want a, of your first fruits. I want you to give even if it doesn't makes sense. Now, in regards to kind of taking that principle, and that seems to be kind of a principle throughout uh, the Bible. In the New Testament, we see it more show up as this idea of sacrificial giving and cheerful giving and giving based knowing God's graciousness towards uh, them and generosity towards the people of God. And so in regards to what we've been saying in the past couple of weeks where we're saying, hey, if, you, if you've lost your job, don't give. Especially, I know last week I said, uh, if your hours have reduced, been reduced, don't give. Maybe I shouldn't have said that if your hours have been reduced, don't give. But uh, in, in regards to losing your job, I, 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 would, I think God would be okay with those that have lost their jobs to not give. He'd also love and see them to give too. Like if, there were, if, it was, if the Spirit led someone that lost their job to continue giving to the church, uh, 
due to their faithfulness to God, I think God's okay with that too. But um, what you see when you're looking at uh, God's idea for his people giving is the poor were to be taken care of through the giving. And so what you see, even in the harvesters, they were supposed to, when they gleaned from the fields, leave kind of the, the stuff on the threshing floor, I think it's called. I, I'm not a farmer, I don't know. But whatever, <laughs> whatever it was, they would leave kind of the extras, the stuff that would just drop that they didn't, that they kind of knocked off as they were taking something uh, off a plant so that the poor could come through and they could gather up enough food to feed themselves. Now, I, I personally, we, you don't really see that they, the poor then were supposed to tithe off of that. I think there was an understanding between God and his people that, that the poor were in such dire straits that that was just kind of the situation we were in. And so that's our heart when we're saying, hey, if you've lost your job, don't give. We're not trying to say, hey, some Christians are called to sacrificial living and some aren't. We don't think that. We think everybody is called to be generous. I think it just looks a variety of different ways. And, and honestly, maybe the past two Sundays, we could have phrased that better or been more theologically clear on where we, we landed with that. And, and again, I, I, I love what we're hearing from people. I love hearing like people want to give because of their faithfulness to the Lord. They want people to be faithful to him and uh, almost like fear him in, the, in a healthy and good way. So I don't know if you have anything to add to that, but I think that's kind of a clarifier of, of that question that came in a good amount. Yeah, no, I, I echo everything you said, except for the threshing floor piece that is a little bit a different place, but as you would walk through, I right? Don't know. I don't know things. Uh, <laughs> um, but the, the, the idea is, is the same, right? And so, uh, in the midst of it, I just want you to know, like, we're, we're tremendously, like, tremendously grateful for the incredible generosity of of our church. Like, you, you guys are incredible and like amazing. Like, it's been such a gift to be able to be a blessing to so many people um, in the city already, you know, a few weeks into the, the kind of the, the crisis that we found ourselves in. Um, and we just look forward to being able to do that from uh, as long as it lasts and, and obviously well beyond. So you, you've always been that. Um, so thanks for continuing to be that. And if you have any other questions, obviously, you can just uh, stop by Anthony's house and, and, uh, and you guys can continue the conversation. And, and honestly, we, we say this, like, correct us. Now, we won't always change our mind, but we want to be corrected and we want God's word to correct us. And so if we're off on this, please let us know. And uh, again, using biblical, the whole of, of biblical thought and ideas. So yeah. with that being said, we're going to move on to a segment section that we're going to have different segments each Tuesday uh, that we do. Sometimes they'll be the same ones every week. Sometimes they'll be different new thrown in segments mm -hmm. each week. And so without further ado, our first segment of Tuesday is things we miss. Things wow, we miss. That was, yeah, pretty good. that was pretty good. Um, we didn't plan that. Uh, so things we miss. So Vince Garvey. Mm -hmm. Uh, what what are some things you missed since the, the, the quarantine, since the stay-at-home measure? This is the closest I've been to someone besides my family, um, so <laughs> I'm enjoying that. But uh, yeah. well, right. what do you miss since all of this took place? Yeah, things I miss. So there's a few that I'll share with you, and I won't try and be too too long. The first one is I miss, uh, I miss haircuts. So uh, I'm wearing a hat more. I think there's been two videos now that I've done the hat. And, uh, and it's because underneath here, it's just, actually right now it doesn't look too bad, but it, it, well, it does. Yeah. And if you could see it, oh, this side, there it is. I mean, it just Not gets, touching. it just gets massive. And so you need something to tame it down. And right now that's my, my Columbia hat and, uh, this is not sponsored by them. Um, but that being said, uh, if you guys want to send us some gear, that'd be sweet. Um, so I'm missing haircuts and, right. and much because Verity keeps making fun of me. Um, and wanting to cut my hair, which we've done that before. That's all right. Um, second thing I'm missing uh, is uh, I'm missing uh, Liverpool, uh, we say football, but Liverpool soccer for, for all you Americans. Um, Liverpool was in first place, Anthony, as you know, because you heard Josh and I chair in the office I a did. lot. Liverpool was in first place, 25 points clear. Uh, there's 10 games left in the season. We only need two more victories to win our first title in 30 years. Oh, wow. And, uh, you know, we don't know what's going to happen. So it's a trying season. And uh, me and the lads have been working really hard to try and get us to where we want to be, which yes. is at the top of the mountain. So it's, it's important to notice that if you watch soccer, you are a lad, not or, or anything else. You're yeah. just a lad. Just do with that info as you will. 
Yeah, you're welcome, world. Uh, so anyway, so I'm, I'm missing sports in general. Like I just, I uh, barely asked last night, like, hey, would you need some you time? And I said, well, me time is me watching sports, which is a lot of replay stuff, which is, is okay, but the live thing is, is the real deal. So uh, the last thing, the, the real true thing I feel like I'm missing is, uh, is honestly, I'm missing Sunday mornings. Um, I, 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 like, it's been awesome, like, in, in many ways to be home. And so what I mean is, by missing Sunday mornings, I miss just seeing all y'all. Like, uh, uh, many of you know, like, I'm a pretty extroverted outgoing i like to talk to people type of person and uh and i just miss seeing a lot of the faces uh of people in our church that like we just don't get to see right now so um yeah maybe just a bunch of, if you want post your picture in the comment thread just so we can see uh what you look like right now and it can maybe draw us in a little bit but uh but that's what i'm missing big time it's just not being together on sunday mornings no that's a good one how about you uh, I'm missing that as well. I'm also missing you getting haircuts as well. Thanks. Right. Insert laugh track intern. Um, and then <laughs> and there's no intern. Uh, but uh, I'm missing, uh, I, I think the biggest thing I'm missing is being with people. Uh, I, you know, I like spending time with people. I like just sitting around in a living room with people or wherever and or even on Sundays too. And it's I grew up in the church, so having a few weeks away from a Sunday uh, has felt a little strange, even though it's only been like two or three years now or whatever it's mm -hmm. been. So uh, so anyways, that's uh, that's probably the biggest thing. I, I, I think I didn't expect to miss being uh, with people as much as I am. And so so I, I think that's I think that's probably the biggest thing I'm missing. I'm also missing the NBA as the NBA was. Um, uh, you know, very at the front of all this and shutting things down pretty quickly. And so uh, it was our year as, as, as far as I'm concerned as a Suns fan. And so uh, seeing them uh, not make it to the mountain uh, was disappointing. Wait, how, how in the world is it the Suns year? Well, we got a point guard this year. So it was nice that we had a, a point guard. And in other years, I think we had... Throw some. out a Suns trivia question. Let's see if this, something random, like some random Suns trivia. Me to them. To them right now. And then whoever answers it first... Oh, Chris Amaro just got on. He's going to nail yeah. this. But Suns trivia, this okay. is unplanned. This is Throw out a question. Whoever is the first person to answer it is going to get a $5 gift card to a place you cannot go right now. Yeah. Uh, okay. What uh, – you don't Google, okay? What is Devin Booker's middle name? Devin Booker's middle name. Oh, I know that one. Cooker. <laughs> Devin Cooker Booker. <laughs> that is not correct, but uh, – Devin Booker's middle name, and uh, we will be waiting see, for the yeah, answer. We'll, we'll come back to that and see who it is. So, yeah. uh, we'll be rewarded. Our second segment is rapid fire questions. questions. Nice. Okay, I was just, uh, sorry, I, I'm the comp I'm like the backup truck. That's good. Uh, it's named after you. So, oh, do you want to say hi to Katie and Jono all the way from New York City? All right, hey, it's good to see you guys. We do love you. We do miss hanging out with you. Please move back. Update. It looks like Antoinette. Antoinette! That makes sense. She's Wherever a big Suns fan. She would cheer for me on Sundays if I ever mentioned the Suns fans. So, yeah. uh, Armani, Devin Armani Booker. Stop I, it, is it really? Yeah, that's, how I, that's why I know it, <laughs> because it's a great name. Um, uh, beautiful man. So, uh, rapid fire questions. Each week we're going to, well, maybe not each week, but sometimes we'll uh, <laughs> just ask a bunch of rapid fire questions to one or the other. And so this week I am in the hot seat, and Vince is going to ask me some. Rapid fire questions. Rapid fire questions. Anthony has not seen these questions. I he saw does one. not know. I he, did see oh, one. he saw one. Well, we, we were saw... talking about it. So. Yeah, but I, I, I tweaked it the way I asked it. But he I doesn't know the list. I don't want him to sit there. So I know it would get awkward <laughs> if I got struck down. <laughs> yeah. And that's the fire. Live cast. All right. So, first question uh, What is your favorite TV show to binge watch right now? Oh, to binge watch right now. Man, I, I have been bad about. Binge watching shows. Uh, yeah, I haven't been doing it. I just got through the office and then the quarantine happened, and I was like, this was badly timed. Um, <laughs> like, you just maybe sounds over messed up. up. Just uh, start over. It's yeah, fine. you could start. I like to give a little month break to yeah. forget what it's like over in the office. office. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's my favorite show to binge watch. Like, even right now, even though I'm not watching it, that's my favorite show to binge watch. Yeah. Sure. Okay. So. Good to know. Next question. What's one way that you are discipling Amelie, Cora, and Jude right now? That's his, that's his three kiddos. Yeah, I think 
Uh, with Amelie, the biggest thing that I'm doing right now, what I'm trying to do with her is um, I'm trying to pray with her every night, no matter what's going on with her going to bed routines. Usually it's the same, but it's a little bit different. And so um, my dad growing up, he would come into our rooms and he would go through the Lord's Prayer every night and he would go through Psalm 23 every night. Um, and I have both of those memorized just because my dad did that. And so, uh, and I really feel like those were huge blessings to me because there's a lot of years where, I, you know, my faith was nominal. I, I didn't really love Jesus yet. Uh, and so, uh, having that now that I do love Jesus is like some great tools. So uh, we go through the Lord's Prayer together, but we also try to focus in on one part of the Lord's Prayer and just talk through uh, what that means awesome. so that we're not just reciting it, but that we're talking through it. And so, um, so yeah, the, which is uh, a fun and interesting dynamic. But the other two kiddos, Jude, I just try to make sure he's alive and eating and all that <laughs> stuff. That's good discipleship. Yeah, that's good discipleship. Yeah. Keep your Cora, alive. Cora, I'm trying, Cora's only two now, but... I'm trying to introduce her to Jesus and praying, and I'm always nervous about how they're going to latch on to this stuff, but I've just noticed she's she's just latched on to it really quick. She's like, let's pray to Jesus. Jesus is God. Wow. I'm like, man, that's good theology for a two-year-old. And so, uh, yeah, anyway, I, I've just noticed that about kids in general. At least maybe I'm biased. Oh, yeah, I feel like kids, kids seem kids in Jesus. general cling to Jesus and God very quick. So so I, I think prayer life in general is something that's the dope. biggest thing. Yeah, and a, a quick encouragement to y'all. Like, please, families, we pray with the kids, roommates, pray with roommates. Like, again, we'll, we'll just keep pressing into you and pushing guys to, like, pray, 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 pray. There's a neat story yesterday. Finley uh, wanted to FaceTime Amelie. It's like, Finley's my, my five year old. Amelie is his five year old, six year old. Six year old now, yeah. Finley, uh, Finley's a little bit younger, but he wanted to FaceTime her. And so I heard him on the phone. He's holding the phone up and he goes, Amelie, I'm looking at the moon right now. Go outside and look at the moon. And so on FaceTime together, they were gazing at the moon together, and uh, and then that's when I that's when I knew I took a little picture and yeah. said this this little thing's <laughs> gonna get played in uh, forty seven years when they get married. So yeah, um, I mean at fifty three. Yeah, I hope so. I I don't know what I hope, but uh, it does seem like they're betrothed at this point. Yeah, uh, yeah. So okay, all right. next question. Um, you get one hundred U.S. dollars. Okay, to support any local restaurants okay. in town in one day, where are you going? Oh, in one day. Yeah, you get a hundred bucks. Where are you okay, going? Okay, obviously day? I'm gonna go to Pato Thai. That's uh, of supreme that. importance. Pato Thai with my guy Raul and some others there. Uh, I would do lunch. I would probably buy lunch for my wife, but that's like twenty dollars there. So I would give 20. a big tip. I would give a big like two dollar tip. Um, <laughs> I would give like five to ten dollar tip at least. Uh, so that would be the first place. Um, I would probably go to Chick-fil-A just because my kids like it so much okay. to uh, feed them. And then, but for me and Jess, for the remaining amount, we'd probably uh, spend it at Lumberyard maybe. We both like the Lumberyard a lot, their dinners. Um, and then I skip breakfast because often I do skip breakfast in real life. And so if I had to eat breakfast as well, I would, uh, I, I don't know. I'd probably get breakfast burritos at Los Altenos or something like that. Oh, that's so tasty. That would be my ideal yeah. day. And that's why, as you can see, I'm, I'm gaining weight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. I know this thing is not good for any of us trying to be careful with overeating. There's just so much so much time at home. So shout outs to the other two. I mean, people were hoping you said Single Speed and Diablo. We oh, love those two places also. We do. And uh, we went them as well. Um, last question. As a pastor, mm -hmm. a little more serious here, take it uh, Who is someone and or uh, any group of people that right now you might think is getting lost in the, sh in the craziness? Mm -hmm. Like it is maybe being overlooked in this season. Yeah, I think, I think one thing is I actually really love our church and the church as a whole as I'm looking out at social medias and different like Christian websites and things. They're really thinking about the poor and um, the elderly. Right, right, and, right. and they're really thinking about it. One group that I feel like people haven't really talked a lot about, uh, though, is um, like single people in general. So uh, just... Dude, all my singles, can we get a like right now? Yeah. Can we get a like, man? Maybe you guys meet each other in the comments. <laughs> oh, hey. those. From there, nice. Um, Just um, like a fire emoji. Yeah. Um, DM them if you're interested. But 
uh, yeah, I, I think our single uh, single people in general, whether it doesn't matter what age, but just single people in general, they they are trying to quarantine and stay at home right now, but they're all alone. Whereas, right. you know, as much as sometimes life's crazy with the kids and stuff, quarantine, it's kind of like, uh, you know, I'm distracted all day and all this stuff. Yeah. And, I, and I know a lot of our single people, they sh- yeah. they sometimes struggle with lon- loneliness and and especially now being alone, uh, even if you're not virtually. Uh, uh, alone, it, it can feel like you're alone. It can be hard. So I, I've been really thinking about anyone, anyone that's single, whether it's young people or older people that have lost spouses. Or, wow. You know. Yeah, that's good. Uh, I, I'll just piggyback on that and encourage us then too, because I, I mm-hmm. think that is, I think that is spot on. And so um, f- for for those of us, right, that that have people at home that are able, you're like you're not socially distanced from everyone, right? Um, reach out and, and and call people, message people. I think um, even I'll share about this towards the end here. Of just it's easy, I think, in this season for people to to feel lonely and and kind of not part of the church. And um, man, that's just not true. And so how how do we cultivate that love? So I, I love the answer. That. Okay, uh, the next segment uh, we can probably get about another five ten minutes for you. The next segment is um, what are you reading? See, this is going to get better and better. Though. This is, we did not spend a lot of time planning this. But, uh, so what are you reading? These are, uh, this will be a segment we do from time to time, which are just books that we're reading right now that we just love, that we're, we're really enjoying uh, for multiple different reasons. And we'll share those with you. And then I highly encourage you to go pick them up uh, if you can on Amazon or whatever. So why don't you start us off, uh, book you're reading that you love and want to share. All right. I, I uh, as you guys might know, I love Tim Keller. Uh, Vince does too. Uh, I'm reading right now. I'm reading, I've been reading Making Sense of God. I've actually just never gotten around to reading it. it came out, I feel like years ago at this point. But uh, Making Sense of God by Tim Keller. Uh, he, I think Tim Keller is the best like apologist type thinker. A lot of his books that I love have nothing to do with apologetics, but uh, this book does. It kind of goes through a bunch of different like, like is just like. Is believing in God crazy? And a lot of our society says, yes, for all of these reasons. And he kind of goes through, is that really crazy though? And so um, it's really interesting. I, I thought from knowing different atheists in my life or different just people in my life, uh, it, it does a good job of talking through those questions. So uh, I highly suggest it's pretty cheap on Kindle in particular too, usually. So uh, this is a good book. You should read it, Making Sense of God. I don't want to put you on the spot. Yes. I, I saw your post last week. Mm. Will you just share kind of what you did and what was the driver behind that? Yeah, so I've just been playing a lot of Spider-Man on PS4. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, oh, not, oh, not that not what I'm Not the Spider-Man yeah, post. No, 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 uh, no, yeah, okay, so Vince saw a post. I posted a, a picture of this book and I just said, I, I said something to the degree of, hey, if there's any skeptics out there, especially if you don't believe in God or, or, or the God of the Bible in particular, I'd love to buy this book for you. and. I'd love to talk about any questions you have. I'd love to hear your perspectives on it too. Uh, and I truly mean all those things. I, w- I would love to hear people's perspectives on us. Even stuff maybe they're like, yeah, that didn't really answer my question very well. Uh, and then I also said, hey, I'll read any book that you want that would challenge my worldview and, and as a way to love and care for them and show I'm, I'm open to, to what they're saying. I, I'm not open in the sense that I believe Jesus is Lord and I don't think anything's gonna change my mind on that one, but, um, but uh, I wanted to show that I, I do love my friends, and so, uh, so yeah, that's that's kind of what I did. And uh, I I skeptically thought no one would answer. I've done similar things before, yeah. and I, I've had a few of my friends uh, yeah. reach out, non non Christian friends, reach out and ask for a book, and uh, said they'll get back to me. So, uh, so yeah, my heart behind that is I care about a lot of my friends that don't know the Lord, and I want them to know the Lord. Yeah. So. Which is great. Yeah. Um, book books I'm reading. Uh, Anthony and I are always kind of churning through some books for for the seminary that we're in, and so there's always that kind of stuff. And, and on the whole, they're they're great. But I want to highlight two other ones. Uh, the first one's a book called "Steal Away Home" uh, by um, by Aaron Ivey and and Matt Carter uh, out in Texas. It's a it's a historical fiction book, which I always love historical fiction in general. What it's doing is trying to, we've got an ambulance coming by here and our soundproofing isn't great. So if it gets loud here in a moment, I apologize. Um, but what's great about the book is it, is it, it's, it zooms in on, uh, uh, let's wait. 
Charles Spurgeon's life, uh, kind of growing up in uh, in the UK, and then zooms in on uh, on um, Thomas Johnson, who uh, is uh, a slave growing up in the South, and but then kind of grows up to become a missionary, uh, and then Spurgeon, right, becomes maybe the greatest preacher in the history of of the church and and so they have this kind of unlikely meeting and become good friends and uh and so just to see that story unfold uh, based on you know pieces of history that we do have it's just an awesome story and it's also incredibly convicting for us to to move into relationship and move into life and in the midst of crazy barriers that exist in our world and things like that. So just the power of the gospel really to unite people. Um, so love that. And then uh, this is not planned, but I'm also rereading Keller's book on prayer as we're trying to press so deep into prayer in this season and, and what are ways that I can keep learning and, and growing that area and hopefully discipling and shaping the family. So again, uh, so those are the sense of God and, and prayer, uh, both by Tim Keller. Uh, obviously it's our, it's our first time doing this so that they were, we're going to show up in this list, um, and then uh, and then steal away home again by by Matt Carter. So uh, would highly encourage you guys to check those out. Before we move into our last segment of the day, uh, Madeline Reed, uh, who many of you know, she she shared this uh, on a on the on the comments, and I think it's worthwhile bringing up. Kind of going off of that question of um, of who are overlooked, uh, she wrote um, Down syndrome. Uh, some states are preemptively talking about refusing uh, care for some disabled groups. Uh, if they were to get the virus or get sick. Um, and uh, I, even just the fact that I think if you, if you ever responded with, with sad face emojis and all that, but I mean, that should move the church to lament and then to action. Um, it should move us to say in the same way uh, that we're trying to say who, who are the least, last, and lost always, what does it mean for the church to then see them as, as not that, right? As, as the, the beautiful image bearers that they are. And so how do we step into service in the midst of that? And so, uh, man, that's just something I think I wanted to point out and, and continue to press into. Yeah. So, that's good. yeah. Last segment. It is quote, quote of the, of the week. week. Oh, you said it faster. That was too Quote fast. of the week to quote clarify. Week. Yeah. K, K, Q, I almost said K. Q, O, T, W. Quote of the week. So we each pick a quote that we read this week somewhere and uh, thought was pertinent to the times or just a really good quote we like. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so this is my quote. This is from Dan Doriani. He's a professor of biblical and systematic theology at Covenants uh, Seminary, which is uh, the seminary MTC, Missional Training Center, is accredited through that we both are part of. Uh, but he said this, and this was an article he wrote about coronavirus, but this is how he opened the article, and I, I really thought this was pertinent and, and convicting. It said, the believer, by rights, is best able to bear bad news. After all, we believe that we are morally corrupt, unable to reform ourselves, and so incorrigible that the only solution was that the Son of God live and die in our place. If we can accept that, we should be able to face hard truths about our health and the economy, and there are hard truths. So I've been doing a deep dive reading all kinds of stuff on this, and I thought that was a, a, a good quote. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, my quotes of the week. Uh, church members should knit their lives so tightly that if you try to pull one out of the body, another doesn't come with him, pulling him back in. Uh, that there is to be such a unity and a bond amongst the people of God that they cannot be pulled away. Because if they were, a whole bunch of us are coming with to bring them back in. Like I just love the vision and the picture and the beauty of that. And I think it's something we desperately need to really still consider when we can't be around each other, right? When we can't just physically gather that we would, how do we really be intentional with still being knit tightly together that we are as a church in the midst of different times? And so that's my quote of the week. And so ladies and gentlemen, we have reached the end of our first Mini G Live. Again, I'm Vince Garvey. This is Anthony G. Anthony G. And we love you so much. Church, honestly, it's a delight to be able to, to be pastors here at the church, to call so many of you friends and, and family, as Anthony often refers as, which we love. Um, I do want to highlight one last thing, is that uh, one of our next segments we're hoping for next, probably Tuesday, uh, is going to be take on, if anyone saw
video of uh, Jim Halpert or John Krasinski doing the Good News Network. He's just kind of been pulling videos from different places and just shared some really awesome things. If you haven't seen the video, please go for it. It's, it's very good. Um, we, we had a kind of a similar idea, even before he did it, because uh, most people would say that Anthony and I are funnier than, than John Krasinski. Uh, yeah, and so most, most of those people are sitting at this table. And um, so what we like to do is for you guys to send in your videos to us of just how life is going at home. Like, and it can be like, you know, for you amazing, like parents, for you amazing singles, you amazing whatever, right? Like share what's going on, share what life looks like with your roommates, with your kids, just trying to be present. It could be things on your discipline well, it could be absolute, mess and and everything in between so we'd love to see that we'll share some videos next week uh and then kind of just i think it'll be some solidarity so that'll be part of next next week's segment and then tune in thursday uh for our first theology and culture thursday it'll be a little more focused a little more kind of uh, us delving into maybe some more serious topics um specifically are we moving forward with what we talked about i think so uh, do you want to share what that is? Yeah, so we're going to be just talking about deconstruction in general, just this idea that there are people that grew up in the church or part of the church in some way, and then they're deconstructing their faith or walking away from the faith. Uh, it's just something coming up a lot in, in general, especially uh, the last couple of months or so, but really the last decade or more, yeah, sure. really. It's always probably right. been a thing. But, um, but we want to talk about that and just talk through some of the things we've noticed in the culture with some cultural icons deconstructing as well, and yeah, just talk through all that. So we'll see you Thursday at 3 p.m. for us to gather and talk about that. Um, if there's other stuff you guys want to see, questions you have, just shoot a comment down at the bottom, prayer requests, any of that stuff. We'd love to hear from you. We, we sincerely love you from the deepest parts of us. So church, thanks for being around with us. Uh, whether you watch this live or you'll watch it later, we love you. God bless you guys. And I'm going to lean forward awkwardly, and I'm going to turn this off. Not touching. And, uh, you will hand sanitize a lot, okay? We're sorry about the no six feet. Yeah, love you. Wait, is it still? It's See, still.